Is following your passion as advice, is that overrated? And then the IRS is staffing up and what it means for small business and you the people. And I'm going to coach you up. Let's go. Coaching you to have the competitive edge to make more money and experience more meaning. That means you're winning in work and in life. This is the Ken Coleman Show. I'm Ken, otherwise known as the man of the people. I, it's self, uh, self-applied moniker, but we're trying to get it to stick. Uh, but we are growing like crazy, um, and I'm so grateful for those of you uh, who watch and listen to the show. And uh, look, you know, it turns out, you know, uh, you feel like you don't have the edge and you want the edge. And I'm here to give you the edge. So let's start with some advice that gets thrown around out there, uh, in person, in books, on the internet. And it's uh, incomplete and can cause tremendous frustration and confusion. The idea, the phrase, follow your passion. Now, I talk about passion every day. It is one element of what I believe are the three fundamental elements of all humans. Talent, what we do best. Passion work that we love to do. That's how I define passion in this context. And then mission, a sense of mission. We, we want to accomplish something that matters to us, a contribution. And so when we just say, well, follow your passion, it is a, uh, it is a do well phrase. It is well meant. It is positive. But it is misleading. It is incomplete. And I want to break this down. And, and, and if, if I could just say in one short phrase, why this is a misguided and incomplete piece of advice, it is this, that passion is not enough. In other words, I can love something deeply. I could be obsessed and want something to happen. But that doesn't make it happen. I, I remember years ago, I, I went on Instagram. It was probably three, four years ago now. And I said something to the effect of, let me set some of you free. You can't do anything that you want. <gasps> what? Why so negative, Ken? You're so harsh. And a very well-known social media influencer who followed me at the time, I might add, not any longer, in my comment said, I beg to differ, Ken Coleman, and I will debate you on this gladly. I said, well, there's nothing to debate because you actually agree with me. It's my reply. I said, the point I'm making is I can love the game of basketball. I can have a deep abiding passion for being great at basketball. But if I don't have the physical talent to be great at basketball, I cannot be great at basketball. I loved the game of basketball. Still love it. But the fact of the matter is, I'm 5'9". Now, that's probably just in shoes. I had average athletic ability at best. I wasn't fast enough, quick enough, couldn't jump high enough. I'm vertically challenged. This doesn't make me less of a human being. It doesn't make me a negative Ninny, it makes me a realistic person who is self-aware. So I can be passionate about becoming an NBA player, but if I do not have the talent to be an NBA player, I cannot be an NBA player. So this phrase, you can be anything you want, is absolute total hogwash. And it leads people, unfortunately, into tremendous failure and a life cycle of confusion and frustration. Well, you told me, people that I love most, admired most, told me I could be anything that I want. I could do anything I want. No, you can't. Passion is very important, but passion must be focused. It cannot just be, well, I am passionate about this. I, I'm passionate about being a music star. Great. Can you sing? No, I can't. Oh, well, we've got a problem. You know, American Idol made this really relevant early on when we saw these kids show up 
They wanted it badly. I love that they wanted it badly. Problem is nobody ever told them they sing badly. So wanting it badly is always going to collide with you sing. And I know I said badly. I'm having fun with it for you grammar coaches out there. Alex, the other day I got a little comment somewhere on Instagram or something, and I was clearly saying something to be silly, and they were like, you can't say it that way. Say it however I want to say it. It's my show, my Instagram feed. Anyway, so let's look at why passion alone is specifically overrated, okay? Passion does not guarantee that you have the talent to pull it off. That's one. Passions can change. And so we need to understand that. It's very important to know that as my life changes and my experiences change, my circumstances change, so can my heart. Now, it's very important if you're new to this show and you've never heard me talk about the methodology of I am on purpose when I use what I do best, talent, to do work I love, passion, to produce results that matter to me, mission. Watch, folks. Passion is all about the heart. Can the heart change? The answer is yes. So thus, passion can change. It just can't. And if it does, great. But we better, we better make sure that if we're going to pursue it for a professional purpose, not a hobby, that we have the talent to actually execute on the, what we love to do. Here's another thing that, that, that tends to create confusion around passion. If I'm only passion focused, I'm not squaring it up to go, okay, do I have the talent to pull it off? Then I can become so selfish and so delusional that it affects everybody around me. I mean, how many of you know a friend or family member who has pursued failure with reckless abandon because they are so locked in on passion only and they have no realism. They are completely delusional and they don't realize that they're wrecking their life, their financial life, their physical life, their family life, because they just won't get real. And this is the danger. This is the danger. And, and I think it's a very important message because I think we tell a lot of young people accidentally that, hey, you just go do whatever feels good. And we don't have the conversation about what it takes to be good. Hey, I think parents have, have screwed this up big time. I think Gen X, that's my generation, has really made it worse. I think it started with the boomers, but I think Gen X made it worse. We're so concerned about making our kids feel good that we don't focus on helping them be good and do good. Which, by the way, you got to be good in order to do good. Is anybody anybody with me on that? Can I, in the chat room, these are the live people that I know are paying attention, sort of, kind of. Can I get an amen somewhere in the chat room, please? Hey, listen, you got to be good in order to do good. And you can't be good if all you're ever focused on is feeling good. I know men and women that do a lot of good. You know what? They've gone through unbelievable sacrifice and pain and struggle and rejection in order to be good. But well, boy, oh boy, are they doing good. So stick that in your pipe and smoke it, all you passion lovers. Hey, coming up, the IRS is staffing up and it ain't good. So you just landed the new job. Congratulations. You've made it past the interviews and now it's time to onboard with excellence. That's why I created How to Stand Out at Your New Job. This free checklist will help you succeed from day one and may even help you get promoted. These practical steps set you up to add value, help your team win, exceed your leader's expectations, and ultimately set you up for a successful transition. To get started, just go to kencoleman.com slash new. Welcome back, folks. I want to tell you about my friends at ZipRecruiter, how they can make your life so much easier and bring new perspective your way. What kind of new perspective am I talking about? The same perspective you get when you discover something that's brand new. Would it be a, a restaurant, a TV show, um, a new product or service that you didn't know about before? Boy, it changes everything. It changes your perspective. 
makes life better. And that's what ZipRecruiter will do for you if you're looking to get out of a a complacent ho-hum job or a toxic, unhealthy job, or you just want to move up the ladder closer to the dream job. You're moving, baby, but you want to move a little faster. I'm all for that. That's why I align with ZipRecruiter. This service does not cost you a nickel, folks. How many times have you ever had a host sell you something that they believe in? A lot. I'm selling you something that doesn't cost you anything. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. You fill out a profile, hit submit, and then just go do life. They're out there working on your behalf while you're working, while you're doing what you've got to do. It's another arrow in your quiver. You got to do it. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. All right. Uh, as a man of the people, here we go. And uh, small business owners, entrepreneurs, pay special attention to this. Some of you got side hustles right now. You need to pay attention to this. Uh, the Democrats have a spending plan that is moving closer to a House vote. It needs to be approved by the House. And one of the provisions in this new plan, this new bill, is $80 billion to go to the IRS to staff up. How many of you feel good when I say that? Doesn't that give you a warm, fuzzy feeling inside? I mean, doesn't that just make you feel great? Alex, I'm just looking at Joe's face. Uh, he probably need to get him a Tums right now. Uh, the investment is projected. So this $80 billion that would go to the IRS for staffing, up staffing, uh, is supposed to bring in $203 billion in revenue between the years of 2022 and 2031. This is according to the Congressional Budget Office. Uh, obviously, those on the other side opposed to this, whether they be nonprofits or lobbying firms or those on the Republican side of the aisle, uh, obviously, they think it's going to affect everyday Americans, not corporate fat cats and people that are evading taxes. Um, so let's look at the facts. IRS audits plunged by 44% between the years of 2015 and 2019. This according to the 2021 Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration report. That's a good thing. But now this is where this gets a little bit tough on the stomach. So brace yourselves. While audits dropped in that time, 44%. If we break it down by Americans making a million or more, it drops 75%. Audits drop, dropped way off the table for Americans making more than a million dollars or more. The percentage only fell by 33% for low to moderate income filers claiming the earned income tax credit known as the EITC. So how about that? Even while audits dropped in a four-year period, they dropped substantially more for people making a million dollars or more. Why in the world are we auditing low to moderate income workers? Um, I'll tell you why. You know why? Because the low to moderate income earner can't fight it like the rich fat cat can. The IRS tries to audit somebody who makes a million dollars or more. Guess what? He's got a lawyer. He's got his own bulldog, and he's a sick him. And the IRS goes, oh, we don't want to play that game. The IRS is a bully on the playground. Rich people can stand up to the bully. Scares the ever-living crap out of, quite frankly, me. It's a problem, folks. Now, these hires, the uh, IRS clarified this week, that, wait a second, these 87,000 new employees. Did I mention 87,000 more employees for the IRS? How many of you out there feel like that's a good move? Oh, sure, they need 87,000 more people. If they answered the phone, yeah. How many of you ever tried to call the IRS? You ever get a live person? Never. So if it's 87,000 phone people, all right, Joe, I'll go with that one. Oh, uh, well, the rumor is it's going to be all people auditing. So the IRS issued a statement. These hires may, by the way, that's the operating word. By the way, only government people like to use the word may. You know why? 
it always leaves the door open. Because will hold you to something. May allows a politician and a bureaucrat to squirm. Well, I'm bringing it today, aren't I, folks? Uh, these hires may include a range of positions such as auditors, customer service, and IT workers. Okay, sure. I'll wait and see. The chance of an audit may increase for self-employed tax players. This is a statement from an IRS spokesperson named Levy. I'm not even going to go look in the article for this guy's first name because I don't care. We'll call him Mr. Levy or Levy. Oh, yeah. The W-2 employee, this is a direct quote, folks. The W-2 employee is much less likely to get audited than a self-employed person by far, in my opinion, says Mr. Levy. It's right here in the article, folks. It's not my opinion. I don't like this. This is bad for self-employed people. A lot of you in my audience are self-employed in one form or fashion. You may have a side hustle going on. Guess what? You're on the IRS radar. Self-employed taxpayers are going to be in the target, the crosshair. Hey, small businesses are next. Let me read this. Another article. New York Post, that first one. Let me cite my article so people's... Thank you. CNBC on the first one. This is a New York Post article. Um, the Joint Committee on Taxation is a watchdog. Uh, group estimates that 78% and 90% uh, between 78 and 90% of the estimated additional 200 billion the IRS will collect will come from small businesses making less than and listen to this $200,000 so this could be a small business person in the form of you folks you got a little side hustle and you only make about 25 grand guess what the IRS is going to be looking to extract money from you because, again, you remember what I said just a moment ago about why it was very interesting to me that there were more low and moderate income workers audited than rich people? Same deal here. They're going to come after the small business people because they don't have the lawyers, the time, the intelligence, whatever, to fight this crap. And they're going to try to push you around. Just 4 to 9% of this $200 billion in found revenue would come from businesses making north of $500,000 a year. Tax experts warn that the IRS audits will be far more painful and costly for small business owners. Duh! Even for those who think they're filing their taxes correctly. Daniel Bunn, the executive vice president for the Tax Foundation, told the New York Post, most small businesses aren't doing anything wrong. We know. But we don't make the tax code simple and because it's so complicated, it makes it difficult for small business owners to comply with all the requirements. Let me point out something else before I make a radical suggestion. It's really not that radical and it's not that new. I also heard reports yesterday, and the team verified this, that the IRS just recently paid $700,000 to acquire ammunition. What in the world would the IRS need with $700,000 worth of ammunition? You answer that question on your own. Now, here's what I think ought to happen. We, the people, ought to stand up and voice and vote around a flat tax. Everybody plays the same flat tax, Abol abolish the IRS, make it simple for people and businesses to pay their dues, but abolish this nonsense and this complicated crap that gives everybody an ulcer and does no good for anyone. That's my word and I'm sticking to it. Did you know that just like a product, you have a personal brand? It's the image or impression others form about you based on your interactions. And whether we realize it or not, our personal brand impacts opportunities to grow in our careers. That's why our team created the Personal Brand Survey. It's free and it will give you personal and professional feedback so you can own your strengths and uncover any blind spots holding you back. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash brand.
All right. Have you left a company uh, in the not so recent uh, past? Uh, and it was you left because it was just ridiculous, whether it be crazy toxic, crazy lunatic type stuff going on, um, unethical stuff. Uh, and if you're willing to share your story with us, uh, you can call us 844-747-2577 or email the show, ask at kencoleman.com. We're going to create a new segment called Why I Left. And these could be horror stories. They could be comedy stories. Uh, I guess there could be a drama in there. Uh, but we want to share these stories to empower the people, right? Why I left. It's going to be a new segment. And uh, so you can title your email uh, or your voicemail, Why I Left. And uh, we'd love to hear your story. We're getting some uh, now coming in. And uh, we want to have some fun with these. So uh, we'll protect your identity if you'd like us to do that. Just state that in the voicemail or the email. Because really what we care about is the story. And we want to expose horrible bossery. I, I want to create a groundswell. So you people, if you agree with me, that leaders don't treat people the way they should be treated most of the time. I'm talking about all leaders. I'm saying we got to hold leadership to a new standard. We do. By the way, that's political leadership. That's business leadership, spiritual leadership. I mean, got to hold them to a higher standard. Now, I'm also going to hammer you all when you do stupid stuff and you blame leaders. All right? So it depends on what's going on here. But the point is, is that it's time we shine the light on some of the crazy, awful cultures. Not every business that way. And I, I believe in business and believe in leadership. Love leaders. Okay? Spent a lot of time with our Entree Leadership brand pouring into leaders. But I, I, I want to shed the light on this stuff. So why I left, ask at KenColeman.com or leave a voicemail, 844-747-2577. All right. Here we go. Two major U.S. and, quite frankly, global brands uh, with a lot of unrest. Alex, I'm seeing it every day. People are storming the castle with the pitchforks, and I want you to know what's going on. First one is Amazon. This is coming from the U.K. Um. 800 workers walked out of the Amazon warehouse on Wednesday and Thursday last week over a 35 pence per hour pay increase. The union in this particular location was seeking a two pound raise to cope with higher cost of living and to better match the demands of the role. Statement from the union, Amazon continues to reject working with trade unions to deliver better working conditions and fair pay. Their repeated use of short-term contracts is designed to undermine workers' rights. Okay? Uh, there are 70,000 Amazon workers in the UK. And they recently said, this is an Amazon statement, that starting pay would increase to a minimum of between 10 and a half pounds an hour to 11.45 pounds an hour in an email. But in this particular location, um, 800 workers walked out. Now, I want to go back to the statement from the union. And when I talk about these things, it'll be very clear to you if I'm taken aside. So please be mature enough, if, you, if you're going to watch this show, to listen to what I'm about to say. Uh, when you've got a dispute like this, it's like, it's like listening to a friend of yours talk about gripe about his wife. If I got a friend of mine who's griping to me about his wife, first thing I'm going to say is, hey, I need you to stop griping about your wife. It puts me in an awkward situation. Okay? I'm not a marital counselor. Uh, but the second thing I'd say to my friend is, you realize there's another side to this story. Like, no matter how much I love you, bro, and how long you gripe at me about your wife, here's what I know. No matter how convincing and detailed you are in your gripe, I'm sitting here going, I know that that's not completely factually true. It cannot be. Not because I think he's a liar. I'm saying in relationships, in business, and in marriage, and in friendship, there's always a second side to the story. So I see this statement from the union. Amazon continues to reject working with trade unions. I believe that. I think big-time companies, certainly tech companies, that do not come from a DNA 
like the auto auto uh, industry in America where unions is a, it's like we kind of know about it. We get it kind of, but it ain't the world we live in. And now all of a sudden unions are coming into places like Starbucks and Amazon trying to, trying to get off the ground. And these leaders are going, no way, no way. It's like a, it's like a, it's like sitting in your car at the drive through and a big old wasp comes in. I think this is how Amazon and Starbucks are reacting to unions. It's like a nuisance. They could sting me. I don't want it in here. I'm going to swat it and get this stinking thing out of my car. I do believe that's happening. The statement goes on. They reject working with trade unions to deliver better working conditions and fair pay. Their repeated use of short-term contracts is designed to undermine workers' rights. I do not think, no matter what you think about Jeff Bezos and Amazon, and I'm no defender of big corporate America, but I'm again, I'm an equal opportunity truth teller. I don't think for a second that Amazon is trying to undermine workers' rights. I think they're trying to reject unionization. I do think that. And that's a different thing. Now, you don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. And if you don't, and you're an employee, when you walk out, don't come back. That's what I think about that. If you want to form a union and Amazon does not want to play union politics... That's their line in the sand and they're drawing it. So you got to decide, do you want to work at Amazon? You know, and this, this, I'm taking my ball and going home. Okay. I actually am okay with you doing that. Doesn't mean that I do it that way, but I'm going to sit here and tell you that I respect your right to walk out. I really do. Great. I probably wouldn't do it that way. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. Second story, same issue, Starbucks. Now, we got a, a TikTok here we're going to show. So a Starbucks barista and union organizer in Buffalo, New York, uh, said he was fired after 13 years of working for the company. Sam Amato uh, had a viral TikTok. He says he was pulled aside this week by two store managers and fired for closing the store's lobby without a manager's permission. According to his TikTok, Workers had been told previously by upper management that they could close the lobby at their discretion. He goes on to say, it's a BS reason. I'm, it's because I'm a union leader. They failed to provide any details or give me any information. After 13 years, they refused to give me any details about why I was fired. Now, I'll take him at face value. If that's true, that's horrible bossery. So after he gets fired, all of his coworkers went on strike. And this is a viral TikTok. Let's show this video. This is moments after he was fired. No audio, uh, but this is just, you can see here, when your entire store walks out after management unjustly fires your coworker for being a union leader. So they're all, they're all unified and they're out. We're walking out. And there's the manager. Oh boy, what's going on there? All right, now, so here's the deal. Again, if a motto is telling the truth, and there's two sides to every story, uh, they failed to provide any details or give me inter any information after 13 years. They refused to give me any details while I was fired. Listen, I don't know that they have to, meaning I'm not putting the burden to say you have to. I think they should. Let's go, hey, look, man. It's not working. It's not working. It's not a good fit. We don't feel like you really want to be here. There's a lot of tension here over this union thing. And we need we need somebody that that's all in. See, and I think that's good enough. And I think I'd say that. But they didn't, according to Amato. Um, because he says, Well, I, I I was I was told that I could close down the lobby. But here's what's going on. There is a rising tide among workers, and I'm not a fan of unions, but people are saying it's us versus you. And leaders, you gotta be aware of this. You gotta deal with this. Because it's only getting worse. Leaders, you're responsible to be the adult in the room. Lay out clear boundaries and lead from them. This is the Ken Coleman Show. If the thought of attending a networking event makes you break out in hives... 
you're not alone. And I'll let you in on a secret. Networking in the traditional sense doesn't work, but genuine connection is all about relationships. That's why we created networking the right way. This free guide is the low pressure, high impact way to overcome the awkwardness, build real relationships, and turn your connections into opportunities. To get the guide, go to kencoleman.com slash network. All right, my moleskin is ready. My pencil is sharpened. Thank you, Joe. I gotta. I always get excited when Joe puts a... Um, I got three pencils today on the desk. Can we zoom in on this? These babies all have fresh erasers and uh, sharpened points. And uh, they are... Look at that. Oh, that's very exciting to a pencil lover like myself. Thank you, Joe. Um, I don't know what equipment you need in your job, folks. But all I need is a pencil and a moleskin to coach people up. Let's go. Lissette is joining us at Bud Lake, New Jersey. Lissette, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, thanks for taking my call. You bet. How can I help? Okay, so I am 32, and I work in a, I, you would say, municipal government. And I'm just over my job. Mm. Like, I don't like being here anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the only reason why I am still here is because of the health insurance. It's really good for my family. Um, and honestly, I just can't find another job. So I do have my bachelor's and my master's in public health. Wow. Um, and I have, you know, a good experience, like years of experience under my belt. Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering... Is it, like, what should I do? Should I just stick it out until no. I find something else? Oh, yes. Sorry, I interrupted your question. Yes, <laughs> you stick it out until you find something else. All right? There's no sense in you uh, making a bad situation worse, right? So you're in a job you can't stand, but that's okay. already creating negative crap in your life. Why make it worse by quitting when you don't have something? Now you're really stressed out. So, yes, uh, but there's one other thing you got to do, and... And I'm not trying to be a stickler, but I think this is your mindset because you're discouraged. But you said, I yeah. can't find a job. And that's not true. You can't find a job. You haven't found one yet. So let's change our let's change our narrative and thus change our thinking. Okay. You can find a job. You will find a job. Okay. You are very qualified. I mean, you got more education than you probably need, let's be honest, but that's impressive. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So what let's just let's just be real simple, you and me. What do we, what do we want to find? What are we looking for? What kind of work do you want to do? Forget about title, forget about where it is. What do you want to do? Uh, okay, well something that I'm extremely passionate about is anything I guess uh, like nutrition related, just helping people in that way, fitness. Um, I am in the public health field right now, so it's kind of along those lines but yeah i feel like working for municipal government has really uh oh. like drained me can i tell yeah. you it literally has sucked your professional soul out of your body yes yeah it absolutely has i know so here's the deal uh okay so that's a good lead so we go okay here's a potential lead path clue right so we go okay i want to get out of the government sector of health but public health doesn't have to be government. Public health could be working uh, in a gym. Public health could be working for a nutrition company that has a product or service. Uh, it could be working for an exercise equipment company. I mean, we could just go on and on and on. Yeah. All right. So do you love instructing people? Is that the jam? Like if I gave you what you were making right now and I added 20% and I said, you get to pick what you're going to do. And we're going to say health nutrition exercise we're just having fun right now yeah. what, what, what would you do what would that look like every day forget about the title and the company what would you actually be doing for eight hours um so i would be helping people with um i guess just fitness and you know working out especially moms. so so would you be a um, trainer moms. you would be a trainer guide I would coach love to do that okay yeah. so how much money do you make right now in your municipal government job 51. 51. Okay, here's your homework assignment. And it's all fun research. 
where in that industry of nutrition, exercise, whatever, whatever, personal health, where can you make $51,000 or more? I'm talking like positions. Yeah. Let's go look at companies. Okay. Hey, upload your resume to ZipRecruiter today. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. I'm not even kidding. Okay. Okay. And, and, and see if you can find a job where you are doing the kind of work you've been doing, but maybe in a corporate setting, right? Yeah. For a health company. So maybe the transition is I take all the experience I have now and I go do that for a company that does what I love while I'm getting trained because it's going to take some time for you to get licensed and trained to do health and nutrition. What must be true for you to do what you want to do? You know what you want to do. Go do the research. And there's the path. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Are you wondering if you should leave your current job or stay put? You're not alone. That's why we created the Should I Quit My Job quiz. In just five minutes or less, this quiz will help you determine if you're at the right company and if you're in the right role. If you need to make a move, you'll even get practical next steps to keep you moving forward. Listen, stuck is a choice, and life is too short not to do what you were created to do. To take the quiz, go to kencoleman.com slash quiz. All right, detail, process, efficiency, animals out there. Pay attention. If you've ever thought about a career in project management, I want you to be aware of our three-week course called Project Management 101. It's going to be perfect for you. My friend and coworker Brendan Wojko, who's our chief technology officer here at Ramsey Solutions, joins up with me. We co-teach this awesome course. And it will teach you the tools and strategies to become an effective project manager. I'm going to specifically help you stand out in the hiring process so that you can actually take what we teach you and cash in on it, baby. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Spots are limited. This is like our fourth one. They go quick. It's gonna, It's been very popular. So apply now by going to RamseySolutions.com slash project. That's RamseySolutions.com slash project project back to the phones to coach some more people up ben is in salt lake city utah ben you're on the ken coleman show oh is this ken uh, as far ken? as far I'm, as i know ken? yeah that's what i'm identifying as today anyway i am ken yes <laughs> gosh ken i'm a big fan of your show i listen to you every single morning well thank you sir how can i help hey uh i'm getting pulled to different direction for my career and wondering what i should do Okay. Tell me the two directions. Yeah. So I'm currently working as a uh, recruiter for a solar company. They've been very good to me, but I'm just not cutting it. I don't make enough. And on the other hand, I have the other company who offer a whopping 22% pay increase plus benefit. And they pay for me to be a, to study and be a project manager. So they've so, offered, that's an offer sitting in your lap right now. Yep. I don't think you're being pulled in two directions. <laughs> Feels like you're being pulled in one direction. What am I missing? Because uh, the, the company that I'm working with right now, they, they've they been so good to me, and I, I feel really guilty. Uh, I'm going to leave them now. And the I boss, see. I see. The team, the team, they treat me like family, and the boss treat me like his own children. But. So, but. But. But what? I'm finish it out. It's not cutting. I, it. Yeah, I'm not cutting. It. I'm not making it now to no. support myself. And, One and court ball hit, and then I'm done for. And do they know that? They do. And what they say? They say just do whatever works for me. Okay, then sounds like they you've just been released from any guilt. He can't do anything. When you told him that, he didn't go, well, look, let's get you a promotion. Let's get you a raise. Let's get you on a path to be able to make more money. It was just like, hey, I'm sorry. Uh, do what you got to do to take care of yourself. Yeah, that's, that's, so why in, the, answer, yeah. well, why in the world would you feel guilty with that response? They're not, they're not, it doesn't sound to me like they're upset about it. It sounds like they can't 
or won't do anything about it. So yeah, you're released. I, I guess you're right. I know I I'm right. right. I'm no, I know <laughs> I'm right. There's no there's no guessing going on here. I'm right. They have released you. Which yeah. means you need to be released from your guilt. I really want to make sure you get this. You are doing yeah. nothing wrong by pursuing a better opportunity for you. Let's just let's just hammer this home. Are you doing anything yeah. illegally by taking a better job? Uh, no. No. Absolutely not. Are you doing anything unethical by taking a better job? No, I've never, been, never done that before. All right. You ever seen that movie Frozen about the ice princess? I did. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You know. What, you know what the theme song is? Let it go. Let it go. I want you wow. after this phone call, uh, put it in some earbuds so that we don't hurt your personal brand. But listen to that song yeah. and maybe hum along to it if nobody's around. That's your theme because you've got to get this in your head. I'm, I'm having fun with you. I don't care if you listen to the song or not. But this is where you got to get to. You got to get to the point where you realize, you know what? They have been good to me. I've done the best job I can do. I'm not doing anything wrong. I got to get over whatever I might think that they're going to say about me or think about me. And I got to do what's best for me. You got yeah, it? And um, I, I took your uh, clarity assessment. Yeah, the get clear Both assessment. In my, in my get clear assessment. Yeah, I didn't read the book yet, but the get clear assessment. These two jobs are in my sweet spot. Just the other one paid better and up for more. Oh man, I wish you'd have led with that. I wish you'd have led with that. That's a no brainer, baby. It's in your sweet spot and it's more money. Go. <laughs> okay. All right, bro. I guess I'll go then. Thank you, Ken. Hey, I really appreciate you. I want you. Show. You bet. Listen to me. I have you. Have are you? Uh, uh, are you, is it a phone call or an email? What's the best way to accept this new offer? Uh, email. Okay. I just need to send the paperwork to them and that's it. I want you to do it before the next hour strikes. Okay. That means you got I'll about eight, by my collection, you got about 18 minutes. Get after it. Uh, why am I saying that to him? Because he's a really good guy and because he's a really good guy, he's very conscientious and it never ceases to amaze me. I, I don't know if in the history of this show, if we've had too many more calls on a topic than this one. I, it is fascinating to me, and I'm not bothered by it, and I'll continue to take the call. But it is fascinating to me, Alex, how many people call me and say, I've got an opportunity, but Ken, I just feel so guilty. And they're, they're calling me really not for my advice. They already know what they should do. They're calling me for my blessing. And I am not the Pope. But it's that's that's what they want. Ken, am I a jerk? Am I a sleaze bag for taking a better opportunity? The answer is if you didn't steal it, you didn't cheat for it, yeah, it's fine. There's no guilt here. But I understand what's going on. Uh, and so, but it is this overwhelming desire that we humans have to be accepted. And so that's where this guilt comes in. But can I tell you, I've set you free. If you feel guilty about taking a better job, it's not guilt, it's fear. You're fearful of what people are going to say about you. So, you know, I got to reiterate this. That's what's going on now. So the reason I told Ben to accept the job within the next 18 minutes is because we act. We don't sit there and keep thinking about it, right? Because if he doesn't act on it, and then later today he's going to go, oh my gosh, but they really helped me out when my kid broke his arm or whatever. It's like, yeah, all that's true. And here's one way of looking at it. <laughs> Flip the scenario. If you were your boss and somebody that worked for you came to you and said, hey, I got a great opportunity. It's going to pay me 20% more. It's in my sweet spot. It's an opportunity for me to grow. How would you feel about it? Go ahead and run through the range of emotions. Well, you'd be maybe a little bit disappointed that you were losing this person. Maybe your feelings would be hurt. Maybe you might be a little bit miffed. Just run through the gamut of emotions. But allow yourself to process it as another human to go, wait a second. 
they're taking to an opportunity to do something that's good for them. The only way I can equate this is um, we've had people leave our team, the Ken Coleman team. Uh, we lost Kelly Porter, amazing woman, fantastic, was my marketer. First marketer I'd ever worked with. She was great, did so much for me. You know what? She got pregnant, had a baby, and said, you know what? I'll never forget the phone call. She goes, and I was so, I mean, I was just distraught. Not emotionally on the phone, but just like, oh my gosh, she's like amazing. But you know what? As I heard her tell me why, I was like, this is the right opportunity for Kelly. Good for her. I don't have anything bad to say about Kelly. Hey, how about Madison? Produced the show for a long time. Floored me. I literally, when she told me, I sat down on the floor. You know what, though? It was the right opportunity for Madison to do what she really wanted to do. It was a step up, opportunity to grow and do something completely different. She wanted to be in sports broadcasting. You know what? Was I disappointed? You better freaking believe it. Was I hurt? You better believe it. But was I angry? No. Would I dare think a negative thought about Madison or Kelly? Not in a billion years. So, flip the coin, get over it, let it go. I'm not going to sing us out today. I thought about it for a moment, but I'm not. Instead, I'll remind you that you matter. You have what it takes. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.